12 o'clock rock. Whoa! Oh, it's Halloween. It's Halloween. <laughs> Look at that person who's supposed to be Marianne Sasaki next to me. What a face. You know, the, uh, <laughs> this is a face that really couldn't sink a thousand ships. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's hard to look at her, actually. It took actually. me all day to get ready for the show. Happy Halloween. And we have a show we're calling um, Things You Didn't Know About Halloween That Are Scary. And one of them is about Halloween. And right after the break, we're <laughs> going to talk about another scary thing, uh, th uh, James Comey. Current events. Scarier and, than Halloween. <laughs> yeah, scarier than Halloween. But first, let's talk about Halloween, Marianne. Okay. So <clears throat> where did it come from? What is it? I okay. mean, is it a serious holiday or it's just fun and games? It's a serious holiday. It's, um, it, the, the origins are disputed, but... It, it looks like a, some combination of an ancient Re Roman festival called Pomona, and that's that. Uh, you know that 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 relates to the apples. That's why we we dunk for apples, and a Celtic uh, a Celtic festival called so Sohow, and um, it is thought that these were um, pre you know Christian religions, and when Christianity began taking over from the, in the ancient world, these these gods and these traditions were just melded into Christianity. So it's the end of the harvest season, the end of the summer, and the beginning of night. That's why we light bonfires. And um, what, the reason we go trick-or-treating is so that we can store food for the winter, gather food. The poor, um, you know, pe the peasants and so on, could get cakes and foods from the richer people, to store them for the winter, and have food for the winter. So yeah, and uh, when we, we play gags on people and little tricks. Right. That's, um, because that's, we want to uh, emulate the dead or the tricks the dead could play. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, the, the costume is, they think that it's uh, derived from uh, medieval, um, like, religious plays. And so where people used to dress up like, you know, sa dead saints or religious figures. And, um, in fact, um, tomorrow is All Saints Day. And the day after is All Souls Day, so it's really intertwined with saints and sainthood and, and, the, and the afterlife. Well, it has become intertwined, but for a long time it was really all about the harvest and uh, what, the equinox? Right. Although it's a few weeks after yeah. the equinox. Right, right. Um, a pre Christian, and it was, uh, in, at least we know in Ireland, it Definitely. was very popular. Right. Celtic, there. Celtic culture. But what's interesting to me is that, I mean, I think it's clear that the holiday began probably in the British Isles. Yes. And it was appealing because it was happy. It was a party, um, a celebration of, of the, uh, the end of the harvest. Um, and it spread. And, and then you find that all these countries in Europe, they all had some affinity for it. And they brought, and Christianity adopted it. Right. And, you know, probably As it did the Pope, many the things. Pope, uh, Pope, uh, Pope uh, there was a Pope involved. Yeah. In I, Gregory, I want to say Gregory, but I. Could no, I don't think it was. I, I, Clem, I was. I, I thought Clementine, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But okay, I know. The, yeah, a, po the pope a pope said, "Gee, said, I like this holiday." Yeah, we're going to make this we're, one we're, of the we're four. We're going to, you know, like, you know, hijack. Excuse right. me. Right. This holiday, right. and so we're going to layer it up with uh, all these Christian ideas, and then, and then from that point on, it was all easy. And every country that was Christian in Europe, you know, adopted right. Halloween. And people go to church in and Christian in countries. The, uh, in the 16th century. The 16th it was late. It was right. late in right. the 16th century. Um, it's part of four holidays, Christmas, uh, Eve, because uh, it's, it's All Hallows Eve, right? So there's Christmas Eve, there's Shrove Tuesday, there's All Hallows Eve, and one more, oh, and this 12th of January. Those are like four big days of obligation in the Christian calendar. So, and they're all at, at points where things are turning, whether we're over the holiday season or over the, the summer harvest or coming into spring. Or mm -hmm. it's, it's really interesting. I mean, it's interesting how um, the early uh, Christians allowed the adoption of these other cults it, because they wanted to grow. Well, it was a pagan holiday. That's, right. That's the right. interesting thing. So right. Christianity adopted embraced a pagan it. holiday, right. embraced it, and, and they knew it was pagan. They knew. They knew it was they, not, knew, not but a they, religious holiday. They really wanted numbers. They wanted, they wanted to reach a lot of people. And they wanted so to they used, they hijacked it. Right, really. right, yeah. right. They wanted a lot of people to read the gospel and, and believe in Jesus. And they were willing to let people still have their other gods, their other local gods and goddesses. 
So when you find something popular, ride its coattails. No kidding. So well, I they took advantage of what stealing. was already popular. You know, <laughs> right, good PR. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and it's supposed to be the day that. Um, w there's a thinnest membrane between the living and the dead, and the dead can come over. They can come, yeah. Right, you that's can why talk we put to them, food out. Around, yeah, we yeah. put food out. We put, uh, or and that's part of the trick or treat. But but in uh, like in Mexico, they put oranges out and uh, kinds of food for the for their dead um, ancestors, and uh, it's so scary. It's ex I love it. It's so it's so fun. Well, what's what's happened in this country though? I mean. You know, I like Turner movie classics, you know. And okay. It seems to me that if you were trying to get a beat on Halloween, you'd find that in this country we've been making horror movies and Halloween movies for a long time. Well, since the 30s. Since but the 30s, since when, movies. But that's when Halloween really became popular in this country. It really be, was adopted in the 1930s. And that's right. Since the beginning of movies, even silent movies, we've been making like Nosferatu. We've been making movies that... Um, well, they're emblematic of our anxieties, right? Like, not, like Dracula or these creatures of the night. They're emblematic of our anxieties and uh, about life and death and living and why are we here? I mean, they, they, they all ask that question, whether it's Frankenstein, Dracula, the mummy. It, there's some existing somewhere between life and death, right? Yeah. I mean, now that you said that, I mean, I even going back into the 19th century um, in France, this Phantom of the Opera. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and, and, and that opera house there uh, mm -hmm. in, in Paris, um, mm -hmm. you know, is de defined by the <laughs> Phantom of the right, Opera. Right. And, and so, um, you know, right. as, as art has covered this for a long time. And we, in the movies here in, in uh, the U.S., we've covered it for a long time. Well, yes, well, because, you know, I think since the beginning of humanity, the big question of, uh, of uh, humanity is what's going to happen to us? Where do we go? Heaven what happens after we die? Or do, is it it? Or are there? And so it's, a, it's the big question that everybody, gra everybody must grapple with. Everybody, no matter how well, high but, a station or low a station. But there are places in the world that don't celebrate Halloween. And, you know, for example, Islam says don't celebrate no, Halloween. No, because it's iconographic. They don't believe in any imagery. And so they don't believe in the cross either. There's no imagery. In, if you look at um, Muslim art, there's no imagery. There are no saints. There's no Jesus, there's no crosses. They they don't, they they think that's idolatry. Yeah. So yeah. that they, they don't celebrate it. But some some uh, new pagans, neo pagans, celebrate it. Well, but, but yeah, I can see the affinity there because it's originally a pagan holiday. Right. If I were a pagan, maybe I am a pagan in some ways. If I were a You're pagan, a Sibur I, Sibur I'd go right? for Halloween big time. I I think <laughs> it was my holiday. <laughs> it is. Well, it's a holiday of like letting loose and, you know. Like it's exploring, exploring the extremes of, of, of humanity, of, of living and, and dying. Yeah. There are Jewish holidays, by the way, that the, fall but, in the but same Jews, period of but time. Jews are the, the Jews are prohibited from celebrating Halloween, although Jews in the United States do. Um, the, because there's a, oh, they're not able to participate in Christian rituals. And yeah. how, and but Halloween if it was a pagan a ritual, Christian, then it would be easier? I don't think yeah. Jews, the, the ancient uh, Jews would appre approve of that either. I think you pretty much, you pretty much had to be Jewish, like in a conservative way. Well, the, Jew, the Jewish, uh, you know, holiday calendar includes a bunch of holidays around this time of year, right. but none of them is like Halloween. Oh, no. No. Yeah, but there's, there's Purim in Purim the springtime. Purim we dress up. And then when you dress up, and then there's, uh, there's uh, Simchat HaTorah, which is when you make fun. Right. And you make fun of the rabbi, as a matter right. of fact. Right. It's really a fun holiday. Right, right. So, I mean, I th you know, I think what happened here is it was a, is a conglomeration of a lot of holidays, and it became popularized, and, and when the church adopted it, um, you know, it, it took on all became kinds of became institutionalized. Institutionalized. But, you know, in, in recent years, and say go back to the 30s and the new movies, or the new movie industry, the new right. movie the, art the, form right. in the U.S., um, we had a lot of stuff that was driven off Halloween or that fed back into Halloween yeah. about, you know, vampires and, and vampires and, Frank and, and terror and, and yeah. fear and all that right. stuff. And you should see those movies. If you haven't seen those movies from the 30s and 40s, and even before the 30s and 40s, you should see them because they're terrific. Like, I'm just as the Bride of Frankenstein, and the Bride of Frankenstein is <laughs> such a terrific movie with Elsa Lancaster, and she sees Frankenstein, and she... 
freaks out just like that. <laughs> they make this woman specifically for him. It doesn't work out. Doesn't work out the way they thought it would. But it work didn't out. end there. That was only the beginning of the genre right. because if you look at TV now, or for that matter, movies in the movie theater, you see an awful lot of these. You know, horror movies. Oh, yeah, it's zombies just, are everywhere. Zombies are everywhere, everywhere. Every Zombies and all kinds of supernatural creatures. Because it's, it, like I said, it, spe it speaks to our anxiety of, of not being a, able to know the unknowable. We don't know. So we, ha we, we form a story and we try to make it into something we can understand. And, if, and make it fun. If we make yeah. it fun, it becomes less, less scary, less, scary, less right. threatening. Right. We're, we're in charge then. But the, the other hijack, there's another hijack, okay? And it probably happened sort of post-war. Mm -hmm. And that is it became, Halloween became part of the ramp up to you know what. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. I'm sure that Christmas. big, big yeah, business did that. Yes, yeah. it's so, sort I mean, of it, now between this and Thanksgiving It, it and used to be, if I looked in the, during the war, you know, in the 30s or 40s, I would have I would have thought that Thanksgiving was the ramp up, mm -hmm. but now no. it's not the it's, and now now we got Halloween. Is there any holiday in a storm? I've got my Christmas sweaters out. I'm ready. Oh, so, gee. I'm, so, I'm <laughs> And I heard them playing Christmas carols already. Really? We're, you know, we're we're not, we're not even really finished with October. No, I know. And we're ramping up so the stores, the merchants. You know, it's a big part of the American economy. Yes, it is. And people, you know, adults, I remember when I was a kid, adults didn't celebrate Halloween. But so over the last 20 or 30 years, adults started, there were so many parties this week and grown-ups. I'm dressed up. I'm a lawyer. I went to my office dressed this way. And, uh, you know, it, so it... You it, could probably go to court like that. I would like to, actually. Maybe you would win because, the, you know, sort of best contest. The right best person, costume. the right the right judge might, you know, find this very appealing. Some judges. Some <laughs> other judges, not. But, you know, what, what? I think when I came to Hawaii, I was surprised to find people at work in Bishop Street. This is 50 years ago. In Bishop Street, everybody dressing up. Everybody in the, in the company would be dressed up with some Halloween. I never saw that when I was a kid. You're right. Back, um, you know, in the East Coast before, well, in the earlier days, yeah. um, it was only the kids, and it was a lot of fun, and they really did do, they really did do trick or treat. Dr yeah, right. They did hijinks. They yeah. did little, little mischievous things. Little mischievous things. things. Yeah, right. But then, do you remember, do you remember, it was coming back to me, there was a guy, I don't think we ever found out who it was, who put razor blades in the candy. Oh, right. That was a big Remember scare that? in that the 60s so, and early the 60s 70s. And 70s. Made yeah. it really scary. So you couldn't have candied apples anymore. You'd have to have packaged candy. And now you can't even really give candy because parents don't like kids getting the sugars, which is which they're right because I ate so much candy today. And I'm, it's not can, candy is not good for you. It's not good to make an entire meal of candy. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, yeah. yeah. Candy, candy's not good for you. But I, in fact, it, it makes you feel faint. And that's why... Um, that's why we take a break here, and we're going to come back. We're going to take another look at this whole thing about scary. Oh, we have scary. Uh, and we're going to see what uh, what's <laughs> scary now in the election with James uh, Comey. Oh yes. We'll be right back. Oh, we'll yes. talk about some really scary things here on He Said, She Said. Oh ha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to get wet this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! This is Steve Katz. I'm a marriage and family therapist, and I do shrink wrap, which is now going to every other week, all during the summer and maybe forever after. Take care of your mental health this summer. Have a good time, do what's fun, and take good care of yourself. Bye-bye. Okay, he said, she said, we like a little controversy here. We talked about Halloween, but the natural, you know, trans, 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 transition. Transition. What's, from, what's really scary, Dave? What's really scary? What really scares me? I mean, you know, it's like we all ought to walk around until this election is, is done in your, in your kind of outfit. Exactly, because this is how I feel about the election. So I'm not scared of ghosts. We've seen drama. We've seen surprises and really ugly things happening for a long time in a too long election. But it's not over. It's like every day there has to be something else. 
So last week, surprise of surprises, after a few days of quiet, I was I appreciated that. Yeah, I did too. James Comey surfaces. He's the FBI director. And he did something really scary. You want to describe it? Yeah, he released um, a, a whole bunch of emails that he were found um, in the um, Anthony Weiner in, in, uh, during the course of the anti Anthony Weiner investigation. So they, they, they think that there is a number of whom Amadin, who is Hillary Clinton's chief of staff, her emails on Anthony Weiner's computer, and they think she that she related to him. Yeah. And they think that that, that it might show some of the ones that Hillary Clinton purportedly destroyed or things that should have been um, confidential that were used on this like public computer. So it, it's just fascinating because, um, as, as I, we said earlier, the, the Justice Department was opposed to this, and they advised Comey not to do it. And so he, he asked for advice on this, or they knew about it? I think they, they must have known him? about it. I don't know the, the process of how, but well, I know they were opposed to it. Why would you think that they uh, opposed it? Why would you think they advised Because I think they thought that doing, doing something without any certain proof, just a fishing expedition, which is what it is, it's a fishing expedition, so, cl so close to an American election undermines the authority uh, of, of, the, of the process. Can yeah. you remember a time when the FBI was making press releases about an investigation that was not complete? That an was ongoing investigation. Un ongoing no. inve in fact, no. investigation early in the course of the investigation. Right. Making national right. pronouncements about it. Right. I, I, can't, I can't get my hands around that. This I, is what Andrew says, my husband says. He thinks that James Comey did this to be assured of a career after he's no longer in, at the FBI to be a political, like a talking head or a play, have a place in uh, cable news or just to, 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 or to go to a conservative think tank, tank he, that he did it to, you know, Andrew to may be giving him too much credit. I, I, think, I that, think there's dark reasons here for what he did. You, you're familiar with the Hatch Act. Right. What's the Hatch Act? Okay. <laughs> the Hatch Act is tim tampering, tempering, I was going to say, tampering with an election, trying to inter inf influence an election before, before it happens. And, you know, in case you reacted, as I did when I heard about this, you know, it's, that it's unfair to keep on massaging this issue and to make statements about ongoing investigations when you really haven't even gotten the investigation going, anything, yeah. knowing there's an election a few days later, that seems unfair. Well, it goes beyond unfair. It it's, a, it's a federal crime right. under the Hatch Act. Right. It influences. It could influence the outcome of the election. But you know, I've never lived in an era where the where anyone doubted the uh, honorability of the democratic system of the our. I mean, our system was the most well regarded in the world we were the models for so many and the systems the fbi walked on you know, water you know elliot ness um although i'd say uh, we we knew it we didn't know it at the time we found out later that Ed, edgar g hoover J yeah j, was, edgar, was, hoover. j yeah. edgar hoover was a was a bad guy he was a oh, edgar g robinson yeah right <laughs> no, j. he was edgar also hoover, a bad guy he was a bad guy but um and he yeah, was hoover controlling was. politicians right. he was keeping files on politicians uh and he was trying to control government. Right. We but didn't know you, it at the time. Right, right. He, he, he um, set up the Black Panthers. He infiltrated a lot of um, radical groups and um, instigated a lot of, like, riots or, or violence. In, in, uh, he, 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 he infiltrated the civil rights movement as well, you know. So he, 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 uh, he, he, he stirred died. the pot. He had files on political officials. Oh, yeah, there was a list. I mean, you, know, you and, could be on, on the profit uh, people, and I mean, really bad. Right. And and we found out about this what in the '60s or '70s, and I think that was a time when people began to question whether the government um, was properly motivated. Well, the, but uh, the government probably isn't properly motivated. But uh, but the election. Uh, that's us? That's us. Don't mess that's with our us. election. This, that's, that's not the government. That's, that's how us. We so, that's what differs, it makes us different from other countries yeah. in the world. We have a clean election. That's our voice. But then you have people in the government, you know, come from nowhere and make statements like this. Um, and, you know, it's, this isn't the first time the FBI has kind of, um, you know, 
done that kind of massaging over the email thing. It's been a regular affair, going nowhere, but in the press. And now, of course, Donald Trump is making a big thing. He's is this worse hay. than Watergate? Yes. But yeah. we don't even know what happened. Right. Right. We don't know what the substantive problem is. We only know that he leaked it, and it's bad. But, but you we know, don't know what it is. Jay, it's so convoluted, though, because you have this guy, Anthony Weiner, that's take, sending naked pictures of himself. You have this woman that's a chief of staff with, of Hillary Clinton that was married to this guy. You have stuff that Hillary Clinton has done, maybe destroyed him. It's so... It's all conflated. Ugly. And the guy who doesn't know, and most of us don't know, is going to conflate it all together. Uh, Wiener, bad guy, bad pictures. Okay, Hillary Clinton somehow responsible. This woman right, with the email and the email problems that uh, Hillary has somewhat connected. Must be all connected. It's all connected. The Clinton Foundation it's, also it's Clinton in the Clinton Foundation. Mix. It's all a conspiracy of all this stuff, which isn't true. I, I, you know what? I, I know rationally it's not true, but do you know that... Even myself, I find myself being sucked into think, is there something there? There's, oh, is there something there? I mean, because it's just constant, you know, there's constant collaboration. And, like, you know, this thing with the emails has really un undermined Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, candidacy. For and now this is worse. And, and maybe not over. We still have a week to go. Maybe uh, Comey is going right. to come up with something else. But one thing I think we can agree on about Comey is that he did this for self-serving reason. He did that through this, this not or a patriotic worse. act that he did. Well, well, it's not a patriotic act. It's an, in my view, it's over time you take these step after step of massaging you know, these issues. It sure sounds like he's increasingly trying to affect the election. Right. And Putin. And that's crazy. I mean, for a government the official world? to do that, I know. Well, it's against the law. Right. And I think she's right. I mean, I'm with her on this part, attacking him for having done it. Oh, he shouldn't have done it. He shouldn't have done it. I mean, I suppose if there was some something, then he could have done it after the election. But doing it at this vulnerable point, right before the election, especially when one candidate is is lobbying these uh, rigged uh, election allegations. Although, but did you see also Donna Brasile? Donna Brasile, who is um, a, a CNN commentator and a big wig in the in the uh, 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 Democratic Party, was forced to step down from her CNN position because she was found guilty of transmitting to Hillary Clinton questions during the debate. So it is all kind of messy. It's all kind of like one big. You know, I don't like Donald Trump. But one thing I have to say that I think Donald Trump is right about is that it's, it is a big cabal in Washington that needs to be smashed open by somebody, some, some hero, some legislator, some jurist, somebody, you know. Oh, I don't know about a big cabal in Washington. Think so? I, I think it's a big cabal about people in favor of Hillary Clinton. You know, I mean, you feel strongly about Hillary Clinton, so you send her the questions, I guess. So, but it's that's not so good unethical. journalism. It's no. unethical. And she's but it's not part of a cabal. <laughs> you know, there's not a conspiracy like it. here. It feels, you know, after, <laughs> after a while, it kind of feels like it. I just, you know, the, the Clintons are so secretive about, you know, all the things they do. And, uh, you know, I just, like I said, I, I intellectually, I agree with you. But emotionally, sometimes I, 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 well, it gives me pause. I think a lot of people are going to jump on. Uh, Trump's uh, notion of there's something really bad here, worse than Watergate, and you know, and we're going to see we're going to see people come out of the woodwork on this, and and again, we're not over. You know, Comey may uh, may have some more. Yeah, he, he, he might have more. Stuff. May have some more, and other people some more. I mean, every day this week there'll be some, the risk of more of this happening. Uh, on both sides. And then what he has may be bad. They don't even know if they can go through it all before the election. So he already has stuff that... He, Make that the worst interpretation against her without knowing what, what you're really interpreting. I just think... I, 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 find, I find politics these days really, truly terrifying. I think Halloween is a it's very a good day sport. to just cut this. It's a blood sport, and the election cycle is too long. I mean, the, 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 oh. the politician, you know, the politician election phenomenon is too long. I'm fatigued. Yeah. What about the mayoral race? What do you think? <laughs> I think Caldwell's going to win. Well, he's got a lot of stuff going for him. I, I got a telephone call yesterday from somebody I know, um, an official, by the way, city mm -hmm. official, mm -hmm. telling me what I should do. And um, I, I would say that he's got a lot of things running for him. Oh, but yes. there are a lot of people coming out of the woodwork on Deju, too. I know. He's got a he's lot got of support now. Support. He's got strong uh, support. But I, you know, I, I heard uh, Caldwell on, um, 
on NPR, HPR with mm -hmm. uh, Beth Ann Kozlovich last mm -hmm. Thursday. He was good. He is a very smooth, very smooth. He really is. He's very, in, in person, he's incredibly charming, incredibly seductive, you know. Uh, you know, Juju has a little bit of that um, nervous energy or something, but not called a yeah. smooth like glass. Yeah. So what do you think is going to happen between now and next Tuesday? And by the way, before we get off that, the, the decision in Oregon. Yes about the, those people who overtook the refu oh. refugee camp by force and then were found innocent yes. found innocent by a jury who felt of their well, peers a jury of their peers who felt what was the reason that felt that they were, didn't undertake they weren't a threat even though they had guns they were armed fully armed that they weren't a threat and they had not made an agreement amongst each other so that there was no conspiracy to do the crime okay underlying reason i think is that people don't like the federal government no. And this was a prosecution they just didn't like. Um, and oh, absolutely. And they're making a statement against the federal it's government. It's nullification. Everything the federal government does. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a problem. It plays in the national election. It plays in every election. It is us distancing ourselves from government in general. Um, and that play, is going to play even in the city election somehow. So, you know, my feeling is the, the point we should make here on he said, she said, is the government. They're us. We are uh, the government. They are us. The election this is, is a us. Democracy. We can't besmirch it. If you don't it. like it, run for office. Make a right. statement. But don't, don't pull the underpinnings out from yeah. under our government. No, don't take your marbles and go home because you don't like the way it's going. No, and, and if you do that, we are, we are all at great risk. This was a hard-fought government. Democracy doesn't come easy. No. And if you want to throw it away, you go, you're rolling things back to a very hard, difficult Re time. Which founding father? One founding father said um, it's easy to create but difficult to keep a, a democracy. I don't know who yeah, said that. Yeah, that was uh, Ben Franklin. Oh, Ben Franklin. You told woman, me that. I told you right. that. The woman who asked him what kind of a government you know, He's a Republican, madam, but if you can keep it. Right. And can we keep it? Can we keep it? Oh, see. He said, she said, can we keep it? We'll be back soon with more on Halloween and what to be afraid of.